Guys, I'm BTC. We got a brand new patch today with some buffs and nerfs, though not exactly what we had on the experimental mode. I'll cover that in just a second. And also, I want to briefly talk about the Jeff Kaplan situation because a lot of people have been asking me about that. So the first thing is the new patch that we just got today. So as I mentioned, this is not exactly what we had in the experimental. It carries most of this stuff. For example, Baptiste still has the same thing with the Biotic Launcher and the Immortality Field. All of those changes are the same. Basically, now you do more healing if you direct hit a teammate, and also the Immortality Field doesn't keep them at high as a health. With D.Va, you now do more damage with the Call Mech. Echo now has less health when she comes back from her ultimate. Moira can now throw out the Biotic Orb every 8 seconds, which is... Yeah, it's, that's going to get, like, spammed so much now. Basically, you just throw out the orb every single time it's off cooldown, and you're going to win. That's that's how it works. With Arissa, you now have the halt on a six-second cooldown. Reinhardt lost 50 armor. Roadhog has a little bit more damage. It's from 6 up to 6.6 .6 per projectile, which means it's going to be somewhere in the range of, like, 15 to 20 extra damage per attack. And then the change that they made with Sombra, the only thing that didn't carry... So, this is the only character that didn't have something that carried over. So first of all, they did increase the movement speed. On the experimental, it was from 50 up to, I believe it was 60%. Now it's 65, so you're going to move a little bit faster than what was in the experimental. But the thing that they didn't bring over was when you enter and leave stealth, they reduced the time for how long that took. So when you left stealth, you could attack or use abilities a little bit faster. You could also enter stealth a little bit faster and be able to get away. They got rid of that. That was not included. The only thing they included was the movement speed boost when you're in stealth, and now it's up to 65%. I believe the original was like 70 or 75, like when they first put it out there. But regardless, this change is going to do absolutely nothing for Sombra whatsoever. The idea that it's going to, that this extra movement speed is going to somehow, you know, greatly benefit the characters you're able to, because what they said here is, Sombra's gameplay usually involves a lot of time waiting for opportunities, movement, blah, 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 blah. Uh, speeding up her movement and stealth should help her get back into the action more quickly. No, that's garbage. That's absolute garbage. It's not going to help the character in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Sombra is one of the least played characters in the entire game. She has a very, very, very niche spot that you sometimes see in pro play or upper bracket. But for the most part, this character is garbage and you don't want to use her. All right, so let's talk about Jeff Kaplan and what the situation's going to look like with Blizzard and Activision moving forward. So after the announcement happened, I went and did a little more checking, and I talked to some people, and I am very much convinced that this was not an amicable split in any way, shape, form, or fashion. I do not believe it, even for a second. I know that publicly... Jeff and Blizzard and Activision are probably going to say that everything was great. It was just amazing and and it was the best thing ever and you know there's just you know just Jeff just wanted to move on to other stuff and blah 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 and I'm sure that's what they're going to say. You know everything was amazing, but it seems very clear to me that something went wrong behind the scenes. And one of two things happened. Either Jeff just got sick of it, and he said, you know what, I'm not dealing with this anymore, and he left. Or Blizzard Activision just forced him out. And they said, all right, well, if you're not going to play ball, then you need to leave, right? You need to just resign, you need to quit, you need to go away, because we're going to do it this way, and if you don't like it, then that's too bad. And this wouldn't be the first time that Blizzard Activision has done this. They essentially did the same thing with Mike Morham, where they forced him out. They forced him to, quote-unquote, retire even though you know very shortly after that he went and started his own game dev studio at dreamhaven i think it's called so he it's not like he wanted to stop making games or stop working on games he just couldn't do it at blizzard activision anymore so that seems like it's the same thing that's happening with jeff kaplan here where he wants to continue working on games he just can't do it at blizzard activision for whatever reason Another thing that just looked really odd about the situation was the blog post that announced it. It was very sudden. It was just an abruptly thrown out there thing. And the blog post itself looked kind of like haphazardly thrown together. Jeff's statement didn't have any capitalization for most of the stuff, right? Like normally when someone this high up in the food chain, someone this important in the company leaves, 
they're going to have a very professional statement and everything's going to put together. And usually you're also going to have something where they announce it ahead of time and they say, okay, I'm going to be leaving in about a month or in about 60 days or whatever. And we're going to have this other person who's going to slowly start to take over the role and I'm going to kind of step back a little bit and that sort of thing where you kind of bring one person in and phase the other person out. But that didn't happen with this. It was just, he's here one day, he's gone the next. That to me seems very indicative of a problem that had to be suddenly resolved. So of course, what was that problem? It could be maybe that Blizzard and Activision wanted to take the game in a different direction and Jeff just didn't agree with it anymore. Maybe Blizzard Activision wanted to have more monetization stuff, get rid of loot boxes, maybe implement a battle pass, maybe have more microtransactions. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if Activision started having microtransactions or mini DLC type stuff for all of the extra campaigns in Overwatch 2. Like, you buy the main game, and you get the, the first main campaign, maybe like a second campaign or something like that. But then all of the extra campaigns on top of that, that they end up creating, you need to buy those. Or maybe they wanted to start charging people for the characters. Maybe it, that was part of like a battle pass system or a seasonal pass system. This is something that other games do where they release a bunch of new characters. But in order to get them, you have to either buy the character itself or you have to buy a seasonal pass type thing. And it wouldn't surprise me if Activision started doing that. And this, I could definitely see Jeff not agreeing with that because Jeff was of the mind, or at least he said this in the past, where he wanted every single new character to be free, every single new map to be free as part of the game, as part of the update. And you didn't have to get any of that. Think about this for a second. In other games like Fortnite and Valorant, players will spend 10, 20, 50, 100, $200 for a single character skin, Activision looks at that and begins salivating because they want a piece of that. For those other games, the average price for one of those character skins is about $20. The price for character skins in Overwatch is 10 bucks for those Overwatch League ones, which are very high quality skins, right? But they're only charging 10 bucks for it. As far as I'm concerned, they're only worth 10 bucks. But the fact is, other games are charging more for less. You look at the other games, they charge $20, $30, $50 for just a weapon skin. Like, that's it. It's just a single weapon skin, and they're charging $30, $40 bucks for it. Whereas in Overwatch, you have an entire character. The entire model is changed. Sometimes they add special effects and stuff, like the new Roadhog skin that we had. All of that, right, on top of it, for Roadhog, you also have to change his weapon, you have to change the hook, you have to change the breather, you have to change what his ultimate looks like. All of that stuff, right? All of it gets changed, and it's 10 bucks compared to just a weapon skin in something like Fortnite or Valorant that is running a $20 price tag. So they get at least double the amount of money for far, far less work in actually creating the skin that gets added to the game. Going back to Jeff Kaplan, I think he's probably going to end up taking a couple of months off, and then sometime around August, September, he's going to pop up and start working at Dreamhaven with Mike Morhaime. Because again, it's not because he doesn't want to work on games anymore, it's probably because he just can't work at Blizzard Activision anymore. So he's still going to work on games, just not there. And as far as Blizzard Activision and Overwatch and Overwatch 2 goes, I don't think that this is a very good sign at all. I think the game is... This is going to be the start of the game going downhill. I mean, it's, I mean, you could argue that it's already been going downhill, but think of it this way. The game was going downhill, but at least we had the brakes on. And now the brakes have stopped working. So I think that what we're going to end up seeing is, and this is not, this is not an attack upon the new game director, Aaron, or, or some of the other people that are currently working there. This is just what I know about Blizzard and Activision. And what's going to happen is they're going to demand more and more and more and more. So what we're going to end up with is much bigger dev teams for the game. And it's going to be churning out lots of content. There's going to be lots of new content, new maps, new campaigns, new heroes, all that sort of stuff. But it's going to be lower quality. So we're going to get more 
but it's going to be lower quality. It's basically going to be snack food. We're going to get lots and lots of snack food for the game. And, you know, rather than having something really nice and, and enjoyable, it's going to be something that's just kind of churned out as fast as possible in order to get people into buying those battle passes, in order to buy those seasonal passes, the microtransactions, that sort of stuff. That is what I expect. And I hope I'm wrong, right? Like, I, I hope I'm wrong. I, I, I have a feeling that I'm not going to be, but I, I certainly hope I'm... Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Show me that this is not going to turn into a Diablo Immortal. Show me that this is not going to turn into a Warcraft 3 Reforged. Show me that this is not going to turn into the Diablo 2 remake, which is now getting certain edits, you know, in order to uh, a, a, appeal to certain, you know, whatever. So show me that the game is going to be better. I, I will gladly, I will gladly take an L. If Overwatch 2 comes out and there isn't any sort of ridiculous monetization stuff included with it, if if it's still making great content and it's not just fast, cheap-made plastic-type stuff, then great. But, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, have a, I, have a, I certainly have a feeling that the game is, is going to... I don't think it's going to improve. We'll, we'll say that. So there you go, guys. New patch out today. We got those balance changes, which for some of the characters are not going to change anything. I mean, half the, half the characters in the game are still completely unviable in most of the matches, right? Like... I don't, I don't, it's, I think it's hilarious that people say, this is the best balanced ever. Yeah, like, you have, like, ten characters that you can't use in nearly any match because they're just so bad. They're objectively worse than all of the rest of the characters in the entire game. So you have a character that shows up maybe once in a hundred matches, and there's, like, ten of them that are like that. You have, you know, almost a third of the entire character roster that only shows up once in a blue moon and you, you try to claim that the game is balanced? What are you thinking? Like, how, like, what do you, are, are you, are you playing the same game as everybody else? How, how do you, how do you see that half, you know, half or a third of the characters not being used, and you think that the game is balanced? I just, I just don't get it. Anyways, there you go, guys. What do you think about the balance changes and Jeff leaving? Let me know down below. A big thanks to all the Paragons and other channel members for all your support. If you'd like to become one and grab some cool rewards, click the join button down below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, drop a like before you leave. And remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault.